I'm French and today I want to tell you 13 huge mistakes people make when traveling to Paris. The first one is feeling like you have to visit the top landmarks. You know, Paris is a very old city with a lot of things to visit. And if you enjoy going to the Eiffel Tower or Le Louvre, I'm not going to tell you to not go there. But what I don't want you to do is to feel like you have to visit all the landmarks. Remember, you're coming to Paris on a vacation, so to actually have a good time. So instead of trying to cram the top 10 things to do in Paris in one day, you should pick activities you actually like. So on my site, for example, I enjoy eating, walking around and people watching. And I can tell you that's what I'm looking for in every place I visit. So a few examples of normal things you can do in Paris. You can work out in one of our many parks. If you enjoy shopping, you can do that. There's so much good shopping here in Paris. There's also wine tastings. There's also art classes and anything artsy. And of course, anything that's cultural. We also had friends who visited and wanted to do really niche things like checking out all of the statues of liberty that are in Paris or visiting the house of Victor Hugo who is the guy who wrote Les Misérables and I really love that mindset and you should absolutely look for cool stuff like that online when you're planning your trip since obviously this won't be in all the guides. The second mistake I see people making in Paris is falling for tourist traps. If you're from a big city that attracts a lot of visitors like let's say New York City you probably know not to spend your time in Times Square and not accepting anything that's free from strangers. There is no thing that's free in this life so no one will ever randomly give you a free gift if they've never spoken to you before. So please don't sign any random people's petitions or accept friendship bracelets from strangers. Like this is literally what our parents warned us about when they told us not to trust strangers. You can just research the most common travel scams on Google but please don't be afraid of everything. I see a lot of people re-overdoing it online and there's so many tutorials on how to avoid scams, pickpockets and even how to like get tactical gear for your trip to Paris. I'm really here to tell you that you really don't need that. Stay aware of your surroundings. Don't let that fear of the unknown ruin your trip to Paris. People are not out there to get you, but just know that if you stay in touristy areas, you shall be a tiny bit more cautious than if you stay in local areas. For example, I live in Batignolles and I really feel super safe. I always let my guard down. There's really a sense of community here. It feels like a little village. You'll often see the same people and people are very trusting. Like this week, my Apple Pay was not working at the bakery and the, the lady was just like, oh yeah, you'll pay me tomorrow. That's how safe my area is. However, just a short 10 minute ride away to Montmartre, I usually like to keep my pockets closed and I'm just a bit more aware of my surroundings. That's all. Paris is really safe, but it is a big city. Although Paris is one of the most visited cities in the world, France's economy is not dependent on tourism and most people who live in Paris don't work in the tourism industry. It's almost like there's two cities, like there's one city with all the attractions that you know of and one for locals who live completely normal lives in almost a separate neighborhoods from the tourists. I personally never see stuff like this on the daily because I just do normal stuff that's made for local people who actually live in Paris and there's never lines of tourists there and it's not because there's nothing to see in the local areas, on, on the contrary. Actually I feel it's because a lot of people who visit Paris just just want to tick the boxes of the top things to do and they just go to the most famous places they've seen online, they take a picture and then they just leave. And I feel this consumeristic approach to travel can be a bit of pudding, especially if you're someone who wants a bit more from their trip than a few nice pictures. And I know a lot of people who have been to Paris once, stayed in the touristy side of the city, didn't have the best experience and then decided to never give Paris another chance. So if you're on this channel, I think you're someone who's probably a a bit more curious about cultures and I think you will really enjoy checking out the local areas too. So obviously it takes a bit more work to have a real cultural experience but it's so much more rewarding. And mistake number five is not being adventurous enough. So if you want to see the local areas you should be a bit more spontaneous with your schedule and just go with the flow but also you should be more adventurous when eating French food. So you probably already know about frog legs and snails and to be honest no one re eats that on the daily in France but here are a few of my favorite adventurous French foods. The first one is steak tartare. Steak tartare is raw meat with a raw egg. And that can be pretty shocking for most Americans, but just know that the food standards are a bit higher here in France, so it's perfectly safe to eat. The other crazy French food you should try, and this one is one of my favorites, is roquefort. 
So you already know that France is famous for stinky cheese, but what about this cheese? And I don't know if I should tell you, but this is mold on the cheese and it's actually delicious and one of my favorite French cheeses. And if you don't want to try moldy cheese because a random French YouTuber told you it's good, I totally understand you, but you should just try random dishes that look good at a restaurant because there's a lot of different delicious dishes in French cuisine that you don't always see in the guides. But one thing you should be less adventurous on is your arrival to Paris. So if you are very tired from a long flight, arriving to Paris can be super overwhelming. Instead of hopping in a random taxi and hoping for the best, you should take a bit more time to plan your arrival. Here are my tips for a smooth arrival that I've applied in around 60 countries. So I personally always make sure I have a data plan on my phone when I arrive to a new country. It makes things so much easier for me because I know I will be tired and I'll forget essential things like the address of where I'm staying. And also I can never count on the Wi-Fi being good in public spaces. So to get on Online from the moment I arrive at my destination, I get an eSIM from Airelo beforehand. Airelo is the sponsor of today's video and they provide instant and affordable data plans through eSIMs in more than 200 countries and regions around the world. I've been personally using them for over a year and it has been my travel hack since I found out about them and I've recommended them to a lot of people. Airelo is a 100% digital solution, which means you don't have to get a physical SIM card at the airport. Instead, you can just install your eSIM before your trip, which is so much easier. And they have a lot of different options for friends too. And if you're planning a trip to Paris, I recommend you get your eSIM with them by downloading the Airelo app using the link in the description and use my code LUCIL3 for $3 off your next eSIM. And now that you have internet on your phone, you should use rideshare apps like Uber or Bolt instead of relying on taxis. So first of all, they're overall cheaper than taxis, but also taxis tend to be a major point of friction when you're traveling somewhere new because it's hard to tell them your address, you don't really understand how much they're gonna charge you, and if you use a rideshare app, everything is gonna be easy. However, in Paris, you should walk around as much as you can because it's very dense, it's very walkable, and you should also use public transportation. The only time I feel you should use taxis or rideshare apps is when you're coming from the airport and maybe you have a lot of luggage. Which leads me to mistake number eight, which is overpacking. If you're coming on a French or European trip, you should be packing light since there's a lot of obstacles. Like there's only stairs sometimes in the metro, in Paris, we have tiny cobblestone streets with tiny sidewalks, and also there's often no elevators in apartment buildings. Don't come here with your massive bags, it will be really, really annoying for you. And this mistake is especially true if you're planning on country hopping, which is also a common mistake people make of going to too many countries in one trip. Like if you're in London one day, then Paris the next, and then maybe you go to Zurich in Switzerland, you've already been through three different countries that speak three different languages, have three different currencies, and very different cultures. So every time you go to a new country, you'll have to adapt to the culture and the customs and understand how things work. And Europe is really tiny, but don't underestimate how different things are from country to country. I've personally lived in London and it's so different from Paris. What I recommend instead is that you pick at maximum one other country to visit and that you really take time to embrace the culture and understand the customs a bit better. In any case, if you want to visit several countries, you should make things easier for yourself and get Aerolos, your link is sim which covers 39 destinations including belgium the uk or switzerland which are also accessible by train from paris this means you'll have internet pretty much anywhere you go from paris and i feel it's really one thing less to think about plus you can use the wi-fi to plan the next part of your trip in the train which is what i usually do but i have a recommendation for you and it's that instead of going to many different countries maybe you just stay in france and experience the french culture so you see france is pretty tiny especially when you compare it to the us but there's there's so many different cultures depending on the regions you come from. So if you want something that's very different from Paris with a whole different culture, you should check out Marseille and you should also check out Toulouse, which is where I come from. In Toulouse, for example, we're a bit closer to Spain and I think it's a quarter of the population that has Spanish origins like me, so it's pretty different from Paris. Another place that I've always found super fascinating culturally and really different, especially, you know, coming from the south, it's Alsace. It's literally at the opposite side of France from where I 
I grew up. And it's just a really beautiful region with a really unique culture. And maybe you should check it out too. In any case, wherever you go in France, there's one thing that never changes, is that you need to say hello or bonjour at the start of every single interaction. And if you don't do it, you'll probably get a negative reaction from people. So here it can always be good to speak a few words of French, at least to say hello and thank you. In any case, don't worry if you don't speak French, a lot of us speak English, and you can always use Google Translate on your phone. And I feel I give this advice in every single video, but it is that important to say bonjour. And another thing I feel is really, really important when visiting Paris is to not come during peak season. So you've understood it from this video, but Paris is one of the most visited cities in the world. So it's really better to come when no one else is here. So for example, in the dead of winter, January, February, it's pretty good, no one will be there. You also have spring and fall that are pretty good to come to, but just whatever you do, avoid coming in summer. In any case, I recommend spending a bit more time in Paris than you think you need. If you're rushed, you will most likely make all the mistakes I've talked about in this video because you won't actually have time to enjoy the city. I recommend you spend at least a week in Paris if you can, but I know it can be hard to get a lot of vacation days, especially if you live in the US. So you should watch this video next to know how to spend your time in Paris.